wait for it. Am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? All right, fine. I'll do it. It's double eviction night, baby! Hey guys, it's Kevin my review for the double eviction of Big Brother 26, and uh, yeah, let's just get into it. Uh, look, I was very cautiously optimistic, as I usually am when it comes to double evictions. I feel like, you know, they're almost always very hit or miss. It's either we have something really exciting that really shakes up the game, opens it up in a way that we weren't expecting it to. It's like this quick blindside that everyone is just in shock about and really emotional by the end of the night, or it's the most boring outcome possible and that likely leads to a steamroll at Final Five and just doesn't really see and kind of is like the nail in the coffin for the season going in any other direction and recently especially I feel like it's it's like there's no in between it's either it's just been really exciting or really boring and you know, coming into this one, I didn't really know what to expect. And the main reason for that is just because of the way this season has been. This season has been really different from what we have come to know with Big Brother. It hasn't been all these physical comps. It hasn't been the same people winning over and over again. There's been this great um, just feeling of unpredictability, this fluidity, this, this level of equity all across the board, uh, really making it seem like anybody could really win and so I think that's what really did make me hopeful that no matter what happened that tonight would still be exciting that this would not be the most uh you know predictable uh double eviction possible and yeah uh this was not the most exciting now look I will say this right now I've already seen a lot of people talk about how this was a really boring eviction and there just wasn't really much to discuss here this is nowhere near some of the worst ones that we've had uh yes I do it, it definitely isn't you know one where I have a lot to discuss in fact I I feel like compared to the other videos, this video could literally end up being under 30 minutes because I just don't have a lot to talk about here. Um, I'd watch it still be like an hour, even though I said that. Um, but regardless, um, compared to other double evictions that we have had, this just isn't on that level for me. I don't come away from this double eviction feeling this sense of sorrow, feeling this sense of just disappointment, feeling like the season I just doesn't matter to me anymore because that has happened plenty of times. Last season, for example, that very much happened. You know, I wanted to see America win an HOH or win a veto and really shake things up and try to take it because I knew that she would try to take out either Jag or Matt. There was an opportunity for Jag to go and that didn't end up happening or even go going to like 23 when Tiffany and Hannah go, you know, this feeling of, oh my God, these are the two people that I feel like were the most deserving of the win. And they both just end up going back to back. And now we're going to give it to Xavier who sure nice guy, but didn't really play that strong of a game to great comp wise, but not really that great of a player strategically and not somebody that I'm like that impressed by a, a solid winner but not as amazing of a winner as we could have had um you know or you look at even like Big Brother 21 it's like okay maybe the shot's gonna be taken on Jackson and then it doesn't happen um I mean there's just so many other double evictions that I could go to where it's like this is the moment that just completely uh destroyed any sort of momentum any sort of excitement for this season and I leave this one just kind of feeling this sense of okay just kind of knowing the direction that things are going in kind of okay with how things are going to be a little bit of you know a, a little bit disappointed that maybe things aren't going to be as exciting especially considering how the season has been but when you, i think it's when you have a season as good as this one has been it's not really putting as much of a dampener on the season um, as much. Having a boring double eviction does not kill the season in a way it has in other seasons just because of just how fun of a ride this entire thing has been. But anyway, we're going to stop. I'm going to stop rambling and we're just going to go ahead and jump into it.
So we're actually going to switch gears a bit here, considering that this is a double eviction and just putting it at the end of this video, I don't think would have made a lot of sense. We're actually going to start off talking about the what we didn't see, uh, just because there are two evictions here and there's stuff I really wanted to talk about on the video I filmed last night. Uh, but because of the fact that I didn't know what they were going to show in this episode, um, I just figured that I might as well just leave it until the what we didn't see for this video but I don't think it really makes sense to put that at the end when I've now discussed two weeks so we're just going to go ahead and talk about it now and the big thing to really discuss again is just MJ as an HOH and uh, just again how just catastrophic of an HOH this really was for her because after putting up Leah making the decision to put her up which already was a really bad one you would think that her best course of action at that point would be just to let her go recognize that you know I have to let her go she's my target there's not really much I can do about it uh, just kind of accept the fact that this is the decision that she needs to make feeling good about that decision you know, yes, that's still really bad, but at least at that point she's made a decision. Instead, she kind of tries to correct the decision that she's made. Um, she has this conversation with Leah that we did see in the episode, which I'll talk about, but essentially she spends the rest of the week trying to save Leah and trying to get everybody to uh, change their vote to Angela. She kind of goes back on this idea of just needing Angela out she's like ranting about her frequently she's trying to get like cam and chelsea who literally are the two people that got you to put her up for some reason she's convinced that they are her leah's path to her safety to her escaping eviction they are the way she's going to do that she keeps trying to campaign to them it's not working at all this also convinces leah that she needs to go in that direction um and yeah, I mean, this was just so bad. This this was just so bad all around. Uh, by the end of the week, it literally gets down to a point where Cam and Chelsea were okay with MJ going on the double eviction with her uh, potentially uh, just, you know, leaving right behind Leah. MJ also does a really weird thing in like deflecting any blame onto Cam and Chelsea, puts it fully on, on Kimo and Rabina. They do kind of show that in the episode, but not as much as uh, I really was because it did kind of get to a point where, uh, you know, Leah was starting to believe this. This is why she doesn't really spend a lot of time talking to Kimo and Rabina. She spends most of her time talking to Cam and Chelsea. Obviously, it doesn't really work. Chelsea wants her out. Cam also really wants her out. Um, but yeah, I feel like I just, I needed to talk about that because it really just cements how terrible of an HOA train this is. I've seen a lot of people say that the only reason people are complaining is because of Leah going, but I feel like it's much more just the way that MJ handled it all. If she would have picked a path and stuck to it, then yes, it's a really bad HO. It's still a bad HOH. It doesn't make sense for her to go down this path but at least she's consistent and at least she knows what she's doing here. She's literally changing her mind like almost every single day, starting off wanting to go for Angela, then wanting to go for Leah, then going back to Angela and basically just losing everybody in the process. I mean, it's, it's just the textbook definition of what a terrible HOH is. And I feel like this was like, this was that nail in the coffin where it's like, okay, this actually might be one of the worst HOHs we've ever had. I don't really think there's any other way to really, look at it the fact she spends most of the rest of the week just talking to Leah as if she's going to be in the house next week and as if she didn't put her on the block. I mean, yeah, that alone just tells you how terrible of an HOH this is. So again, I just had to get that out of the way. I felt like it didn't really make sense to put that at the end of the video considering what happens, but either way, we talked about that. Let's go ahead and now talk about some things that are a bit more relevant here. The only other thing to talk about here on the What We Didn't See is with Leah. So the majority of the rest of this week, Chelsea has kind of latched on to this narrative that Kimo and Rabina are the ones behind it, and she kind of is, like, baiting Leah into thinking that she's going to keep her, never saying for sure that she's going to, but making it seem like she's at least open, which I do think is really good jury management. I've seen some people kind of uh, criticize what she's doing here. I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing to do. It, you can kind of play it off as, well, I thought it was going to go in this direction, but ultimately it didn't, and... 
Sure, you can have people in the jury house to fact check, but if you've done a good enough job, they're not going to. So I don't think it's like the worst move for her. However, there is a point with Leah where they're talking about Angela and Chelsea talks about how if she won HOH, she wanted to take Angela out. And she kind of has this like Freudian slip at least two times and Leah catches on to both of these and... There's a moment where she goes to MJ and she talks about how she was a little bit worried at what Chelsea was saying, but also thinks that maybe she's just paranoid. So this is like the one thing throughout the week that like, okay, this could actually be somewhat interesting, but also kind of gave us the indication that Chelsea was not going to keep Leah and there was really no chance about no chance about it whatsoever. But the fact that this also doesn't get MJ to clue into the fact that Chelsea is not keeping Leah. She's constantly framing every interaction that they have as like a good one. Uh, Chelsea and Leah, you know, when they have their conversation, she kind of makes it seem like this is a good, you know, this is good. Or when her and like Cam and Chelsea have a conversation, she thinks it's a good one. But every single time she thinks it's a good conversation, it usually isn't. And it's just really fun to see. So again, all of this happening really made me feel like, okay, MJ is leaving in the this double eviction it's gonna be really fun to watch and i was just really hoping that would be the case all right so before we get into the actual eviction there are a couple moments and what i will say about this double eviction compared to others is that this is easily one of the most well-paced double eviction episodes i have ever seen from big brother going as early as having this really fast recap where this guy was like doing almost like he was on ecstasy like rapidly firing through the week in a way that i haven't seen before um and then just getting right into the meat of what they needed to show with this footage where we have this scene between Leah and MJ where Leah basically tells MJ that, yeah, you've been played. I was never coming for you. This is not the direction that things needed to go. Uh, MJ's like rattling off all these points to Leah. And at this point, it feels like she had like cliff notes of what Chelsea needed her to say. Like, oh, I need to talk about this point. Okay, let's talk about that. Oh, I need to talk about the Matt thing. Let's talk about that. Oh, I need to talk about the fact you're going for Chelsea. Let's talk about that. Like it just nothing about what MJ is saying here feels like it's coming from her her it feels like this was something that she was like programmed into saying um which again just really makes her seem like this puppet of sorts that isn't willing to make her own decisions and really just losing any sense of credibility that she had. Um, and Leah obviously is very annoyed about this. They have this whole conversation about how MJ says is like a really hard move. And this kind of is what gets her back on wanting to save Leah at this point. Uh, this conversation with Chelsea also ended up being like a good like six hours or so. And they only showed like a little bit of it, which I thought was pretty crazy. There's also a segment with Mackenzie and her freaking out to Chelsea that she got played this week, which yes, she did, but uh, kind of thinking that maybe she's just spiraling, which is very much not the case as it very much seems like she could have very well have been out tonight. Uh, we'll talk about what happens, but it did seem like maybe that was going to be a possibility here. Uh, I did forget to mention real quick that this conversation between MJ and Leah um, really is a per another perfect example of just how much MJ fucked up with this HOH. There is no reason why this conversation could not have been had before the veto ceremony. It could have been discussed even at the, you know, even before after nominations. I mean, one of MJ's reasons for not putting up Leah was because Leah didn't really talk to her. But the thing is, MJ did talk to her once like Leah did try to talk to her once and MJ was taking a nap there was another time where like she faked it and she was taking a nap and yet still didn't want to put her up I don't understand why you don't just have this conversation with her clear things up and then you don't even have to put her up at that point uh instead you now put her up and immediately after this conversation are regretting it and it just makes things so much messier and I feel like, again, if she would have just gone ahead and had this conversation with her initially, things probably go much differently this week. It's such a cleaner HOH for MJ. She probably just puts up, like, Rubina, and it ends up being just much— or, or just doesn't use the veto, and it ends up being much smoother as a result. But instead— 
We have one of the messiest and like worst HOHs that I think we've seen, and this was another very good example of that. She does talk to Chelsea about it and saying that Kimo and Rabina were the ones mainly coming after her. Chelsea doesn't really know what to believe, but also correctly recognizes that like there's not really much she can do about this. What's done is done. She spent so much time wanting Leah on the block. Why would she decide to suddenly change course now? There is a scene between Cam and Chelsea where they're talking about the double eviction and what they really want to happen this week. They do discuss uh, Kimo and Rabina and how they may be potentially coming for them and keeping Leah might be the only way to make it so they don't take that shot at them and Leah's able to save them there. And so it gives, it's you know, it's what you typically see kind of giving you a little hope that Leah's going to stay, but ultimately knowing that this probably won't end up going much of anywhere. There's also a segment with Mackenzie and her freaking out to Chelsea that she got played this week, which yes, you did, but uh, kind of thinking that maybe she's just spiraling, which is very much not the case as it very much seems like she could have very well have been out tonight. Uh, we'll talk about what happens, but it did seem like maybe that was going to be a possibility here. So we get to the actual eviction, and, you know, Leah does give a speech there. She seemed really nervous during this. Uh, kind of makes me glad that Leah didn't touch the block until this moment, because I feel like we would have gotten some really terrible speeches from her. She does talk about how much that she, you know, loves everybody, and how it's it's been a really janky couple of weeks and that she'd really love the chance to stay and kind of express her loyalty and, you know, fight for those around her. And again, you can really just see how much she is struggling to get the words out here. Angela is her typical passionate self giving the speech saying that if she has to spend the summer away, they've all become her second family. She loves Leah with everything. She wants to continue to fight and have her children rooting for their mother on TV and on her favorite show. It suits their game and the keep her around and we get down to the votes and this is the one thing I will say that is definitely disappointing about this episode is that this has been such an exciting season full of just exciting voting outcomes, things flipping left and right. And one of the biggest, I think, consistencies has been there hasn't been any unanimous votes. Even the most predictable ones, there was at least one person who voted the other way. When Brooklyn left, you did have somebody that voted out uh, Cam. When, uh, you know, T-Cor left last week there was someone you know chemo still votes for rabina so it was a little bit disheartening to finally see a vote that resulted in a unanimous one but it does end up being Leah going out here, and I mean, when you have somebody like Leah who has never touched the block until now, it's really, and you have four people who have been actively campaigning for her to go all week, it kind of just makes sense that this ends up being the vote count here. Um, and it does really suck to see her go. I'll talk a little bit more about Leah when I talk about her speech and things like that. She does have a really good speech with Julie. There isn't a ton to talk about here other than how she's not necessarily mad at MJ. She understands her perspective, but she absolutely would not have done this to her. Uh, definitely had her back. Julie does try to ask her who she would have picked between Angela and MJ. This was kind of a funny moment where she's like, if there was only one, and Leah was saying, I really don't know, and, and Julie kept hammering this point that it, she had to pick one and she just couldn't do it. And I don't really blame her. I think Leah is in a situation where both of them were loyal to her and both of them were people she's had on her side. MJ, definitely she's had from the beginning, but Angela, she's built a very close relationship with. I think ultimately she probably chooses MJ because I think she realizes that Angela would have been very hard to beat in the end. Um, but, you know, she does talk about how excited she is to see Quinn. And yeah, I mean, let's talk about Leah a bit because look, I have been a really big fan of Leah since preseason. I said it then and I'll, I'll say it now. I thought that she just had so much potential within this game. Yes, I think the first half of this game, I really wasn't impressed by her. I didn't like the fact that she just wasn't really doing all that much. And it's not like she was actively playing. She spent the first couple weeks of this game uh, just kind of talking about who like her crush was going to be in the house and just not really bonding as much with people as she needs to, actively pushing someone like Quinn away, saying that he made her uncomfortable, which, again, I said it before, you know, that was totally, like, her feelings, and her feelings are always going to be valid, but not really recognizing what she needed to do 
But once she started to recognize, you know, that Joseph wanted to work with her, that Quinn wanted to work with her, I think her game really did start to pick up. I still very much do praise the move she made of saving Angela. I think that did wonders for her game. She had Angela on her side, and if she made the correct decision last week, I think it would have honestly been the move that really does propel her game forward. If she would have just gone ahead and put up Chelsea and t -Core and Chelsea's out of this house, I think things go dramatically different for Leah. The problem is she just constantly second-guessed herself as a player. She felt like she knew the correct decision, and she knew in her gut it was the right thing, but she would always try to walk it back. She would always feel like she needed to go in a different direction, and... I think that really is what hurt her. I think, if anything, Leah needed a double eviction HOH because she would have known what to do and she wouldn't have second-guessed herself. And I think, ultimately, she talked herself out of it. And from there, I think I just wasn't very impressed by what she did as a player. I don't really love the way she played this week. I think she had a lot of good ideas trying to, you know, get Rabina and Kimo to go after Cam and Chelsea, trying to get Cam and Chelsea back on her side and framing, you know, after Rabina and chemo are kind of framed for Chelsea and Cam's doing. Uh, you know, I, I also trying to get MJ to realize that she's being played. All these things are good. It's just a matter of timing. Timing is everything in the Big Brother house, and I think that Leah really does showcase just how important that really is. There's so many things she did that could have been so effective, but the timing that she did it, it just didn't end up working out. If she would have talked to Rabina after the veto ceremony, for example, that would have have been really good for her. I think that honestly really could have saved her in that moment. And she probably doesn't go on the block if she does that either. Um, if she would have initially just put up Cam and, you know, Chelsea and t -Core and not have to rely on her janky veto, um, again, I think things work out much differently for her. Even if she would have told Quinn when, you know, she used the veto on Angela to not put up Joseph, it's just things like this that really could have been so much better for her game. Earlier on, also, I wish she would have tried to make some stronger connections, really try to fit her, get herself into an alliance. I do really appreciate how she did did play like the textbook definition of a floater game. The reason I hate it when people say the word floater instead of coaster, Leah's a good example of that. I think something she did extremely well was try to get in with whoever was in power and get that person on her side and feel close to them, never having a definitive path for herself. You know, when people that the problem was, it made it so even down to the end, she couldn't really figure out where she wanted to go, what direction she really wanted want to lie a lot of this week when when she's campaigning you know people keep asking her where do you see yourself and she can't give them a straight answer so I think her biggest issue is just she didn't play actively enough in the first couple rounds of this game I think if she had I think she could have ingratiated herself more with some of the house but also make some other key decisions and I think Leah is just in a much better spot She's also just not a very adaptable player, um, and I kind of said this uh, last week, and I, I very much do stick by it. I think her biggest issue in the game is that she, similar to Joseph, actually, had this plan with Joseph and Quinn, had them on her side, uh, was fully ready to like play both of them, and then they ended up both leaving, and she just couldn't figure out how to kind of find her footing after that. And I think the way for her to do that would have been to make a really big move in taking Chelsea out and then kind of like reopening the game from there. I think that would have been way better for her, but she didn't do it, and ultimately she ended up going here. And yeah, I mean, again, like I said, I think... It was definitely kind of some, a lot of it is her own fault. Now, it's also very much MJ's fault. She shouldn't have made this move. But I do think Leah going, uh, you know, a lot of it would have been prevented if she just would have done some things differently. And it, it always sucks when that's the case because it's like you're one step away from leaving to making a deep run and I feel like that very much could have been Leah she was capable of winning comps she had some people on her side but ultimately it just wasn't enough and I feel like she just needed to do more than she ultimately did I do really appreciate the fact that she did campaign as hard as she did this week I don't think she campaigned the right places but a lot of that I do fault MJ for and not really Leah um 
Leah was like fully against like Cam and Chelsea and then MJ kind of turned her back around. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I see things with her. It sucks that she won when she did. Um, but a lot of it again was kind of her own doing. So that was the first eviction. And, uh, you know, when it came to this second part of the episode, I was just really hoping that we would get something just a little bit exciting, whether it would be Kimo or Rabina winning HOH or Angela winning an HOH. You know, I just really, wanted to see something happen that wasn't just Kel uh, Chelsea or Cam, but I also was really hoping to see, you know, MJ leaving come to fruition. I really wanted to see that happen, and we almost get to that point where the uh, HOH, it ends up basically being what they suspected. It does turn out that the Julie deepfake um, was, in fact, questions for this comp. Basically, it's a true or false as to announcements that the deepfake Julie made, and this was easily one of the most exciting parts of the episode. Uh, you know, it's honestly kind of a nail-biter. It seems at first like it's going to be this pretty obvious steamroll for Chelsea and Cam. The two of them are pretty much in the lead, but Angela isn't too far behind them. And eventually, Angela starts catching up, and I was like, oh my god, is this going to be the comeback of the century? Is this going to be the moment where Angela is able to get herself out of this tough situation? I mean, she's been that player for all season where every time it seems like she's going to go, there's something else that ends up happening that ends up saving her. Is this going to be that moment? We get to this tiebreaker with Chelsea and Angela, and Angela does not put the right number. She ends up putting like 15,000. Chelsea puts 10,000. Chelsea is correct. Chelsea uh, wins the HOH here, and from this point forward, I still was having just a little bit of hope, despite the fact that Chelsea goes to Cam and says that she wants Angela out. How many times have we heard that this season where someone wants her out and then something dramatically changes to alter that outcome and Angela ends up staying? I was just really confident that that's what was going to happen again, and I thought what would lead to that would be what ends up happening next, where we get to the veto, and it was a veto where I thought, honestly, this might have been the one that ends up ruining things, where it's a veto where, the, you know, you have to roll the ball uh, down this, um, this path, and you have to try to get all five, and I thought, oh god, this seems like a comp that MJ is probably going to win, this is like very similar similar to something she did in AI Arena. I feel like she's going to get this. But we get to the veto, and Kimo ends up actually winning the veto here, which was honestly really exciting. Look, I have not been impressed, admittedly, by the way that Kimo has been playing this game, but I root, I root for him because I do like watching Kimo on the feeds. I like him as a person. I like just the passion that he has. I wish he put that energy into playing the game and seeing him lock in in this moment and actually get the veto. I was excited. I'm not going to lie. I was actually really excited to see Kimo get the veto. I would have loved to see Rubina get it. I think that would have, in especially in hindsight, that would have been the most exciting. Um... But then it comes down to who is going to be the replacement nominee. And I really, I think, got my hopes up here. I will be honest. At this point of the episode, I did get my hopes up because I really did feel at this point pretty confident that Chelsea was going to put up MJ and it was going to be this huge blind side and this was going to end up saving the episode and she talks to Kimo and it does seem like maybe things are going to go in that direction. He asks her straight up, who would you put up between Rubina and MJ? He says MJ, but then she kind of mentions that she's most likely going to put up Rubina. Um, and again, we really got to just praise Chelsea for a second because the way she talks to Kimo, even in this brief moment, it just really showcases why she's in the position that she's in because she does it in the form of a question. She even says to him, like, she's sorry she has to put Rubina up, but that she's going to make sure that it will be Angela that leaves. She needs to make sure that Angela goes this week and Rubina going up is the key to that. And Kimo's just okay with it. He doesn't fight against it. Now, this is Kimo, who infamously usually doesn't fight for things when he needs to, um, but again, if Chelsea had slipped up here in the way she did with, like, say, Leah, um, you know, this could have honestly been pretty bad for her, um, but she doesn't and ends up putting up Urbina, and at this point, I think we knew 
it's a wrap. We knew it was going to happen. Um, it, we get down to the vote. There are some good pleas here. Rabina talks about, you know, fighting for, like, her community and things like that and how much she really wanted to stay. Angela gives another really fun speech, uh, just kind of talking about how much she'd like to stay and that she doesn't want the journey to be over. It's been this up and down roller coaster that she wouldn't really change for the world and that she wants to fight and protect and do all the things that she said that she would do. But it comes down to the votes, and once again, it ends up being a unanimous vote for Angela to leave. And my God, what a what a fall from grace this really was uh, for Angela, because all season long, we have seen her constantly escape eviction, get to a point where she was the target, have the veto used on her three times. To see her actually leave here is pretty depressing. I'm not going to lie. Like, to actually see Angela leave in this moment, it, it feels like we're living in an alternate reality. It doesn't actually feel real. It kind of feels like something where it's like, no, you're joking. There has to be another out Welcome here, but no, Angela does leave. Now, I will say, I think Angela probably had my favorite exit of the entire season. She starts out and she's just hugging everybody, but then she goes full on Angela, just talking about how, oh, I would have won and I love all of you and you were, you were, you know, you did such a good thing by evicting me, talking about how she would have taken chemo to the end and she you know, would have taken him no matter what and how, you know, she starts saying that, you know, um, and, you know, just really just having this excitement and all of them also feeling this sense of excitement and how infectious it was. It was just a really fun exit to see. So many people leave the game either bitter or upset or they leave in this very, like, uh, just boring way where they hug everybody and then say they love everyone. But Angela did it with this just sense of passion that she's brought to the entire game. And again, this is why Angela has been such a standout this entire season, because she has this sense of energy and she says all these out of pocket things that nobody else would and this was just such a perfect moment there so again as much as it sucked to lose Angela this was a really fun moment over uh, nonetheless we do of course then get to Angela's ex interview and look there's been a lot of good interviews with Julie this season but I think I can confidently say that Angela's might just be the hands on favorite uh, especially just her passion her energy the way she's like interrupting Julie every few seconds uh, it's just, it's so good. Her being so confident that she would have won. It's just, it's, it's great. It's everything we love about Angela. She's just so hyped for all these questions. And I loved it. Like it, normally we see house guests upset when they are asked questions, but Angela, I, I think is just rightfully proud of herself and you can really feel that in this moment and as a result it was honestly a lot more exciting than I think anybody expected it to be um where Julie is talking about how she survived the block six times and how why she was voted out now and Angela talks about how she was a threat and she thinks that she would have won this game she also says that she would have taken chemo to the end, which really is not that surprising. She did use the veto on him. They had a really good bond, and I think just in general, she felt this connection towards chemo, so she says she would take him to the end, and if he would have won, she also would have been fine with that. Um, I think that would have been a really interesting final, too. Like, side note, I don't know who would have won in that scenario. I think probably Angela, I do think, ends up winning them over. I mean, when you hear her speeches, like, how how do you deny her the win at that point? Like, just, I, I feel like it comes down literally to speeches, but also just the story that Angela had. I think probably she does get it, but there's a possibility Chemo gets it. Rubina and, and T-Core are on the jury, so you never know. Um, it really could have gone either way, but I... That's what she was going to do, and uh, she also says, you know, she talks about how she came in here not really knowing who she was outside of being a mom, outside of being a wife, and she really did kind of find herself, and that's really what makes her feel good. She always knows that she's strong, she's resilient, she's a fighter, she's going to continue to be that for the rest of her life, and uh, she always talks about, I, I like that Julie asks if she's always this emotional, she says that she isn't, but the house does it, and the house did it to her. She found daughters and sons and look again I just the fact that Angela is gone now is honestly really sad because I think Angela uh really 
is one of the big reasons, not the only, but one of the big reasons why this season has been as good as it was. To have somebody like Angela, who comes into this season and typically is the oldest player that ends up just kind of being a goat or ends up just being pawn constantly and not really doing much other than that. To see her come in here and just make such a big splash immediately with her HOH, calling Matt out, actually being able to get him out, uh, going on this whole rant about him, and then... Make, seeming she's going to go there, but then ends up staying. And then in week four, she ends up winning HOH out of nowhere when Quinn was absolutely going to put her up at that point. Uh, you know, and, and then from there, you know, you have a moment where it seems like maybe she's going to finally go when Quinn wins HOH again. But then Leah saves her and she ends up surviving. And then, you know, and it's then it seems like for a bit she's fine with Tucker, but then uh, she's worried about Tucker and then he leaves and it seems like, oh god, Angela really fucked herself, but then Leah saves her with the veto, and then it seems like from there, things are gonna be fine, only to then get to this week, and she's on the block, and unfortunately, she... Her reign is ended, she's no longer able to survive, and yeah, it definitely is really sad, but it's such a uh, unprecedented story that we just don't normally see in Big Brother. I mean, she, no matter what happens, has the title of the person that has been saved with the veto the most, which is pretty insane. She also is somebody that won two HOHs, she won a veto when nobody really expected her to, she survived until final six without almost no allies, without half the house, with half the house wanting her gone, and yet still finding a way to survive regardless, I mean, I, I think we really just have to praise Angela, because look, was she a good player in the beginning? No, I think she was far too reactionary, I think she was very overly emotional, and I think for a lot of people, they did feel kind of turned off by it, but I think she started to really understand the game, and I think she really started to use it to her advantage. The way she would play dumb constantly, I thought worked really well. I thought the way that she would handle certain bits of information in a immediately do something about it, I think was really good. There's so many people in this house that like to keep information to themselves, but she actually did decide to do something about it, and it really did end up working out for her. The way she was constantly able to gain allies in the game when it seemed like she was at such a deficit, I mean... Angela is just truly one of a kind. I mean, there's not many players that could have played the game in the way that she did, let alone make it all the way to Final Six in the way that she did, and I just think that has to be commended. I think when we look back on Big Brother 26, there is no scenario where Angela is not one of the first people that we are thinking about. I mean, again, just the passion, the energy, the fire she brought to this game really just cannot be, um, you know, it, it just cannot be denied, and it's one of those things where... I I do think Angela was a big threat in that way. I think for Chelsea, this was absolutely the move to make. Angela was the last person in the game that probably was the worst outcome for Chelsea. If, if Angela won HOH, there's no doubt she puts Chelsea up. And Chelsea even says that at the end that she was worried that she was going to go. And yeah, I mean, I don't think Chelsea was going to go. I think it probably is Cam that leaves in that scenario or MJ who leaves in that scenario. But... I think Chelsea, you know, correctly assumed what she needed to do here, got Angela out, and ultimately, you know, I do think it, while it was the right move, it's still very unfortunate, because I think Angela is just such a fun character this entire season. She brought so much liveliness and just so much fun to the feeds, and also just to see somebody who at 50 years old has this level of excitement to her, isn't afraid to be so authentically herself, unabashedly, not really care what anybody thinks, it's just so refreshing to watch, but also to see her actually be able to win comps on a season where things are fair and equitable. It was just really great to watch, and I really just hope the takeaway from this is that we get to see more players like Angela. We get to see people who are that, you know, who are energetic, who aren't afraid to make big moves, who aren't afraid to call things out, who are just, you know, willing to be themselves and don't really care what impact it has on them either way. Uh, I just hope we get to see 
more cast you know more castings just like this because i think that angela was just so fun throughout this entire ride it sucks to finally see her go here but i do think that she went in probably the best way she possibly could she nearly won this hoh which just really did show how much of a fighter that she really was the energy the the passion she put into it it was just incredible and yeah as much as it sucks to see her go here um i think that you know after an entire season where she was constantly a escaping the block and always finding a way to uh, get out of tough situations to see it finally happen here as disappointing as it is uh, it does feel kind of fitting I feel like Angela was one of those players where it's either she keeps going on the block constantly or she does find a way to make it to the end and I think that as much as I would have loved to see that other outcome happen this is also not the most the, the, the this this is also not the worst outcome for her I think her doing this until final six there's something to be said about that the fact that she was constantly fighting this wasn't a situation where she was the pawn most of the time she was the target this was not a situation where and this is what makes her such a, a fun player is that most of the time when you're on the block that much it's because you are like the pawn of the season but instead Angela was the target and I feel like a uh, a more uh, strategically sound cast would have recognized that, you know, would have tried to weaponize that as a way to get somebody else out. But thankfully they didn't because it just made for so many incredible moments throughout the season. So I think we really just have to be grateful for Angela. The fact that she gave us so much excitement throughout the season. She found a way to make things so much more unpredictable, throwing a wrench into so many different plans and, you know, being saved when we least expect it to happen. Uh, again, I think we just, we, have to we have to uh give Angela her flowers in that way and I think in general she is just such a uh she was just so such an incredible presence to watch throughout this entire season yes her gameplay not really the greatest but it doesn't but when you're bringing so much energy and so much excitement to the game it really doesn't matter at the end of the day I mean Angela is going to be one of the reasons this season is remembered as fondly as it is no matter what happens her crazy eyes rant is going to go down in the pantheon of Big Brother fights for years to come. Uh, and I think, again, we just should be really grateful that Angela was on this season. So, again, I feel like I've said enough. She was just such a fun presence throughout this entire time. I really was thinking for a second that like Angela was about to win this game like somehow Chelsea didn't win it was gonna be Angela but ultimately it didn't end up happening she came up short and I feel like you know after an entire season this wasn't the worst way for her to honestly go out so let's talk about this double eviction overall just kind of my general thoughts because yeah this definitely was not the most exciting uh seeing Leah and Angela go I mean I said it last week I thought that this was definitely a huge possibility I thought that there was a very good chance that it could go in this direction. Uh, I was just really hoping that it didn't because I really like seeing the friendship that formed between the two of them, but I also like that Leah and Angela are players that are real largely unpredictable. You don't know what they're going to do when they get power. You had Leah who won a veto and didn't tell anybody what she was doing until she used it. Um, and then you had Angela who won HOH and was like, you know, went in some really interesting directions the first time she was HOH. One veto didn't tell anybody what she was going to do except for chemo. Um, and so I just really wanted to like see something happen. I Not that I necessarily want Chelsea to go because I've been a fan of how she played. It's more so I just want to see a little bit more opposition heading into the final five. Um, but ultimately that didn't really happen. And look, I mean, I'll, I'll get my thoughts on this final five. I think it's pretty set in stone at, the, at this point what's going to happen. Uh, most of the time around this point... I'm really annoyed at the game, and I don't like the fact that who's going to win, and I don't like the way things are headed, but this is one of the rare times where I'm actually okay with this outcome. Like, if this really does just come down to Cam and Chelsea, I'm honestly fine with it. I think the both of them have played very solid games. I think Cam, as he's gone on, has only gotten better, and then just the level of dominance that Chelsea has shown, particularly in these last couple weeks, has been incredible to watch, and the way that she has everybody wrapped around her finger nobody is really 
able to come to the conclusion that she's the clue that is holding everybody together, that she's the person that is behind everything. Nobody's able to recognize that. I just think is really solid gameplay. And so, yeah, if she does manage to be the winner and she does actually get to the end, I'm honestly okay with it. I don't really have an issue with Chelsea winning this game. I think she would be a perfectly, uh, you know, deserving winner. I think that, you know, she's one of the most dominant winners we've had in a very long on time. I think she has such an interesting story. Uh, I just would have, I honestly would have been fine with seeing her actually, I, I, I would be fine with seeing her actually achieve the win here. That said, I would still like to see some kind of a shakeup, and I just don't know if it is going to happen. But I think the one person that could potentially cause a shakeup, and the only way that Chelsea doesn't make it to the end, is if we're in like a Final Four situation. If you know, right now, Cam and Chelsea, they've basically solidified a Final Four with Kimo and Ravina. They want MJ out next week, and it does seem like if she doesn't win HOH, which if she won HOH again after such a disastrous HOH, it would be so funny because either she is going to correct what she did the last time or she's going to pull a Quinn and have an even worse HOH, which after the HOH she just did, I don't even know how you it could be any worse, but I wouldn't put it past MJ just because of how she ended up playing this last week. Um, but with that said, I do think that Right now, the final four is where things do get interesting. If, let's say, Chemo wins, uh, if, if, let's say, Cam wins HOH, and then, like, Chemo wins the veto, the only person that could go up at that point is Rubina, and Chemo's not going to send out Rubina. He would send Chelsea out there. I do think that's the only way that Chelsea can somehow not make it to the end, and if it does end up being a three of Cam, Chemo, and Rubina, I do think things get a little more interesting here, and I actually do see that being a very likely possibility um on the feeds a lot of the time when cam is like really annoyed by a conversation or he just wants to decompress he does go over to chemo and rabina and just kind of you know shoots the shit with them and sings along you know to all the all the songs that they make up and just talks to them about like theater and stuff like that and it's there's some of the most fun conversations that have happened on the feeds cam and rabina have had like a very interesting relationship especially to where i honestly would love to see them be the final two if it's chemo and rabina in the end i don't necessarily think that's a bad winner i do think that if they get to the end and make the correct move of getting out Chelsea, um, I do think that they do become deserving winners at that point. You know, same way. And I think Cam also would be a really solid winner. So, no, I don't necessarily think that things are, you know, while things are set in stone, there are still other outcomes that would be exciting. And it's mainly because I just really like this cast. I know that I have criticized a lot of the gameplay from Kimo and Rabina especially, but if they find a way to turn that around, everything I say, you know, is still somewhat valid, but it isn't nearly as bad if they are able to find a way to turn around and end up at the end. Then suddenly it actually ends up becoming a much more impressive game. So yeah, I mean, I, I've seen already on social media, as we typically see, Big Brother, people having these highly exaggeratory responses saying things like, oh, this is the worst Final Five ever, and that this was this was so much worse than last season, and that, you know, the, the season's over, you can just write Chelsea the check right now, and while I do think that is a very likely possibility, like, it's, there's not many outcomes right now, at least, that make me believe that, that lead me to believe that Chelsea is not winning this game, I do think this is actually a pretty solid Final Five. Um, I mean, look, most of the time, we have a Final Five on Big Brother, it's comprised of, like, three people that were in an alliance, and then two people that blindly followed them and are not winning this game and have really no shot whatsoever. At least this time around, we have, yes, Chelsea, who is a front runner, but literally everybody else, um, is, has played wildly different games. You have like Cam, who was very quiet in the beginning and has really been rising in the ranks as the week has gone on. And while he hasn't done anything super dominant yet that didn't involve Chelsea, there are things that he can do that I do think could separate himself from Chelsea. The way he played last week in particular, um, 
with getting t -Core out, you know, he said that he regrets it, but I do think that we could see some of that cam again. He had this conversation with Leah yesterday where he was, like, really annoyed at her and, again, just showed this uh, level of, um, he, he just, he showed this, um, this level of dominance that I do think he is very capable of, and he showed this uh, level that I think he, he is very capable of showing, so I do think he is someone to watch out for. And then as far as Kima Rubina, I mean, they have had really good moments. I think Rubina, whenever she's on the block, she's very good at campaigning. The way she handled things with Leah this week and revealing the information to MJ, I think was really good. Uh, I like the way that she ended up playing in the beginning of this game with like Brooklyn. I think all of that was great. Chemo was actually a really strategic player when t -Core and Tucker were in the house. I think he honestly did a really good job. It's just recently he really has kind of fallen off. He sings a lot of songs and eats a lot and that's kind of all he does. He doesn't really talk a lot of game, um, but that does not mean that it can't change. Like there, The thing about this this season that I really have loved is that nothing is ever set in stone. There's always a possibility that things can turn around. We can be in a situation where it seems like this is going to be what the season is. And then the Pentagon is destroyed and then the collective is destroyed and then Leah wins HOH out of nowhere and then oh my god Angela has had the veto used on her again you know like there there's and then oh my god even tonight chemo won the veto like there's so many possibilities that can happen and again it really does come down to those equitable comps like yes I do think there is a possibility where MJ most likely goes this week she is absolutely the most likely person to go in a final five but I can see scenarios where that doesn't happen and that definitely does excite me so while yes I do think that this is not the most interesting outcome, I do think there are still possibilities for things to go in different directions, and especially when compared to last season, where it seems so obvious that Matt and Jag were just going to win every single comp, because again, things aren't overly physical, um, I do think that that could end up going in a different direction, and most likely, I do think BB Comics is coming up, I think that probably is going to be either the HOH or the Veto, as long as they get rid of that stupid zipline, um, I mean, it's a comp that literally anybody could win, if they don't get rid of the zipline, I mean, I think we're looking at a Cam HOH, but also could be an MJ HOH, but we'll see, uh, I really don't know what's going to happen there, but either way, um, I'm just really excited to see how this season does wrap up norm like i said normally at this point i'm just over the season i want it to end but that hasn't happened this season i'm coming away from this double saying yes it was boring yes it was not maybe the most exciting outcome, but I don't feel like it has completely soured any goodwill that the season once had, and oh, there's no coming back from this, and oh, this is just going to, you know, paint such a bad picture, and the rest of this game is going to be so boring. Like, yes, that could be a possibility, but I'm not necessarily mad at it. If it do any direction this season goes in, I'm honestly okay with, and I think it really just speaks to how much I have enjoyed this season overall. So, yeah, I mean, that's really my thoughts on this week moving forward there's not a lot more big brother that we have to talk about next week is kind of a weird one there's only two episodes we have a sunday episode and then a two hour thursday episode so there's not going to be a lot to discuss. I assume we're going to get some jury segments. I think the jury house is going to be a lot of fun to watch this season. Having Quinn and Leah in there who are probably going to develop some kind of showmance and then having t -Core and Angela, two people that really just don't like each other all that much. I think that's going to be a really fun atmosphere. Seeing Leah and Angela reunite, uh, seeing Angela and Quinn in there, two people that didn't really get along most of the season. I, I think there's a lot of possibilities for the jury house and I think that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Again, I just hope that this end game is still really fun to watch. I hope that it still is exciting. Uh, the momentum... It's not really there anymore. I will say that right now, this does kind of feel like a halt to the momentum. But again... We only have two weeks left, and I honestly, I'm I'm okay with it. I'm really just okay with it because it's not like there's a ton more of this season to go. And with the people that are left, I'm honestly fine with any direction it goes in because I've liked everybody this season, and that's just not something that I can usually say at this point. Uh, yes, there are things that Chelsea does that are very questionable. I'm sure many have said the way she talks to Cam, not great, not a fan of that. 
some of her politics, some of her, like, religious stuff. I'm not a big fan of that, but aside from that, I do like this Final Five. There's some things that MJ that has said that also are kind of questionable, but I do still really like this Final Five, and I'm really fine with it going in any direction whatsoever. I somehow also forgot to mention that going into this next HOH, it is literally now the trio versus a duo, and that is just so rare in a Final Five. Most of the time, it's like it's like a alliance that has controlled everything and the other half has no chance. Now, Kimo and Morbina don't have much of a chance because they're not very good at winning comps. Even though Kimo just won that veto, I still don't have a lot of hope in them, but you never know how things are really going to turn around. MJ still is probably the main target to go here, so we'll really have to see like what's going to happen, but again, I think it just speaks to, again, how much more exciting uh, the endgame could be, but Either way, that's really it for my thoughts on the double eviction for Big Brother. Uh, let me know what you guys thought overall. Would love to hear your thoughts on all of that. And also, if you like this video, I have a ton of other Big Brother content I've been covering this entire season, as well as you can check out other seasons. I covered 21 and 20 other seasons as well, but... You need to watch those. Those were podcasts if you want to check those out. I'm also covering this season of Survivor. Uh, very much liking the direction things are going. I haven't watched the latest episode yet, but I did finally put up my review of the first episode, so you can check out my thoughts on there. I'm going to be doing weekly reviews of Agatha All Lawn and The Penguin. Excited to talk about both of those, as well as uh, a bunch of movie reviews and TV shows. And if any of that interests you, would love for you to uh, definitely watch, definitely uh, would love for you to check that out and also consider subscribing. Would love to have you be a part of all of that. Uh, but that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you guys in my... But that's really it for this. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, let me know again what you thought of all this stuff overall. What do you? What direction do you think this season is really going in? I think it's pretty obvious what's going to happen at this point. But do you think there's any chance that things could go in a different direction? Like I said, I think there is. But maybe there isn't. And I'm just being naive. And it's just going to be a Chelsea win. And honestly, like I said, I'm okay with that. Because I think she'd be a great winner. But either way, that's really it for this. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you guys later. Okay, bye. Don't worry about your laundry, forget about